Will you join me in a word of prayer? Amazing God, we give thanks to you, for you have indeed lavished your love upon us. Oh God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day. We give you thanks for this time that you have given to us to be about our first work, and that is to, to praise you, O oh God, and to give you all of the glory that you are due. O oh God, in this time, help us to put aside that which would try to take our attention from you. Help our hearts to be set on you, our minds fixed on you and our eyes to look to you. Amen. Well, I I like to consider myself a pretty honest person, but there's a a turn of phrase where we say, can I just be honest with you for a second? And that doesn't mean that I'm not usually honest, but this morning I'd like to be honest with you about something. Uh, And that is the fact that I struggle with Romans. I struggle with Romans. The, the, the book that we, we read from this morning, the fifth chapter. And it's not really that I don't like Romans. I actually really like Romans. Some of my, my stepping stone verses that I, that I often go to uh, to find a, a, a sure foot uh, and a place to stand at least for a moment and a place to jump off of, uh, they are in Romans. A lot of those verses that I go back to when, I, when I'm in need of some kind of assurance and, and, and they're, they're also stepping stones in my faith as far as forming and, and walking along. But I struggle with Romans because I don't really think that I totally get it. Does anybody else feel that way or am I the only one? Uh, and it's not just Romans that I feel this way about, but I struggle with a lot of scripture for this reason that I'm not sure I totally get it. Now, if you're feeling uncomfortable that the pastor doesn't really get it, that's okay, uh, and, and, and you're just going to have to learn to live with me like that, uh, and we're just going to have to have an understanding today. Uh, but today's, perf- today's passage that we read this morning is a perfect example of what I'm talking about, what I mean by, by I don't really think I totally get it. Uh, the first part of our reading this morning was great. It's fantastic. To summarize, faith is a gift. All right, love it, I'm on board, amen, let's keep going. And and then because it's a gift, it's not that we did anything to deserve it. Uh, It it comes from God that that only faith in Christ makes us part of all the things that are going on in this whole faith thing. That's only our faith in Christ that makes us part of what God is doing in the world. Still on board, I'm right there with you, hallelujah, amen. Amen. But then it takes a turn, and I'm not sure that I can follow. I'm not sure I follow that turn, and I'm fairly sure that I'm not going to like it if I do follow. Because this scripture takes a turn, and Paul moves from talking about faith, which I'm all about, on board, like it, love it, want more. And then Paul moves from faith to talking about suffering. And that's where he loses me. Partly because I don't want to go there. Anybody want to go this afternoon? I'm going to go suffer. Anybody want to go with me? It's a little harder sell than going to the river on a day like today. I'm not sure I want to go there. And also because I don't think I've ever truly been there. See, for me, faith has been pretty easy, which isn't to say that it's not a struggle. I do struggle. I have good days and bad days, just like you and like everybody. But although I struggle, I don't feel like I suffer very much. I feel like I have it pretty good in my faith life and in my life life. And I'm not sure I I suffer in the way that Paul means it, in the way that Paul meant it for, for the Christians that were in Rome that he's writing to. I'm not sure I suffer in the way that they did for their faith and in their faith and and struggling with with, uh, this new idea, this new kind of revelation of God that comes to us in Christ. That's a little bit kind of a, a, it's a little bit different than the faith that was handed down. I'm not sure I have that struggle because I can sing that song, Faith of My Fathers, Faith of My Mothers. 
The context of Paul's writing leads me to believe that there's a, a pretty good amount of distance between the audience that Paul writes to, who he's penning this letter to, and me. And it's not just distance of time, but it's, diff, it's, a, it's a circumstantial distance, I think. Because I live in a much different world, in a much different place, literally, uh, as well as just the makeup of, of the society is so much different here than it was in Rome about 2,000 years ago. For Christians, for people. And it's at that point, it's at that point that I start to realize that I have made a huge mistake. I've made a huge mistake in how I'm starting to read this scripture. Because I've turned to myself. I've turned to myself and I've started with me. Where's the first place you start? Do, right? It's not me. It's do, re, me. So I'm third. We should, write, we should make bands to put on our, on our wrist that says I am third. Do, re, me. Yeah? Don't steal that idea. That's mine. But I've turned to myself and I've made me the focus. The truth is, I'm not the subject here. And I've gotten off track. So how do I get back on track? Well, to get myself and, and you, because you're on this journey with me, like it or not, uh, to get myself and us, to get us back on track on how we're reading this scripture and how we're reading all scripture, I'd like us to go back to school. Yeah? Yeah. No, I hear some groans from over here. Like, we just got done. Leave us alone. Uh, I want us to go back to school. Specifically, I want you to go back with me to seventh grade, fourth period. Who remembers seventh grade, fourth period? Recess. Oh, that was a good one. I was in reading. Reading with Mrs. Wright. That was a funny joke. That we had Mrs. Wright for reading class. Ha ha. It was funny in seventh grade. Um, and, and, and I'd like to go back to some point that was especially difficult. Uh, I want you to go back with me, if you can remember back that far, uh, to reading class, or, or maybe it was English or grammar or whatever it was, but I want you to go back with me and I want you to remember this Diagramming sentences. Diagramming sentences, people. Let's get excited. Let's have some fun. Today we are going to diagram sentences. I never had that. Some of us never had that. You never knew the joy. Uh, ask somebody this afternoon about diagramming sentences and they'll tell you. Uh, but let me, let me begin to, to lay the groundwork for those who may not have ever experienced diagramming sentences. Diagramming sentences, and I see it in people's eyes, and you're, not, you're shaking your heads, it is a nightmare. <laughs> if you, like me, struggled to even like reading, we found a way to make it less enjoyable. <laughs> you, too, can grow less fond of sentences and writing by just taking lines and dissecting something down to where it's not even fun anymore. It was, it was a nightmare. It was pointless. It was a struggle. And I have, I have memories sitting at the dining room table with my dad for many hours. God bless him. Uh, happy Father's Day, by the way. Um, many hours. My dad was an English major in college, and I struggled with English because it just... I just struggled. Um, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to work on it. And I knew I didn't want to do this part. <clears throat> and so I, I remember sitting down with him for hours to try to get ready to pass the quiz, to pass the test that was coming up on this. And, and just, I struggled with parts of speech. It, I think it all goes back to, uh, let me teach you a cool trick. Uh, it goes back to my first grade when we started learning parts of speech. I remember too, uh, from my first grade teacher, Mrs. Hatfield, uh, and, and for some reason I picked English, maybe I was bored from the start, to do this, where if you're listening to someone speak, you just kind of take your hands, your fingers, and you plug your 
ears for just like a second while somebody's talking and you only catch every other word? Did you do it? <laughs> Try it for a second. You only catch every other word and it kind of makes things a little more interesting while you do it. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So I struggled with parts of speech to know what parts of speech, and that was a very important part of this because all of the different lines, they all had to be different parts of speech and the, the, the slants and the dotted lines and all of the other stuff. You knew if you were good at this, and I don't remember this, thank God I've forgotten it. Um, but uh, you could tell just by looking at it without reading the sentence, oh, that's, that's functioning here as an adverb or an adjective because it's on that specific line and this is how you diagram sentences. But I remember sitting down with my dad and struggling through this and, and just trying to learn all the different parts of speeches that I should have already known by this point. And, and somehow I had gotten by uh, in school and, had, and fooled people into letting me go on to the next grade. Uh, and then I got past seventh grade too. <laughs> and you can't make me go back. Um, but a breakthrough happened one day because I, I, I was starting to understand nouns and verbs and, and adjectives and adverbs and all of the different stuff. And I was starting to know where they got, but I kept tripping over one thing. And my dad finally identified it and said, Russell, you do, you, do you know what a preposition is? And I said, um, sports, dad, sports. Can we go, can we go play sports? Uh, and he said, no, no, here. Look on this page in your, in your textbook. Here is all of the usual suspects in the preposition world. I'll be back in an hour and I want you to be able to name them. You know, or it wasn't maybe that far, but it was, it was, you need to know these because this will make it so much easier because you can just find a sentence and pick out a preposition like nothing, and it'll make it easier because you'll know exactly where those things go. And so we finally had a, that breakthrough moment, and things got a little bit easier. Um, and so uh, I want to I wanna steal a page out of seventh grade reading class to fix the problem that I'm having reading today's scripture. I want to find the prepositions to fix my mistake in reading this passage as if I was the subject. Diagramming sentences and finding specifically the prepositions. So what we're going to do, we're going to diagram the sentences today in our... Uh, it, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that to you because I don't want to fail so hard. Um, uh, so... Uh, but we are going to take a look at the next slide. I've, I've done most of the legwork for you. And, and the blue words are what I'm pretty sure are, are uh, prepositions. And if they're not, don't burst my bubble. Don't hurt my feelings. Just be like, he's so adorable. And pat me on the head in your head, okay? Um, uh, so uh, all of the prepositions, this one is, is pretty littered with them. Um, uh, all of the blue words, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. Can you, re can you read it that with me like that? Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, one nation under... I'm sorry. Uh, and we boast in our hope of sharing in the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. It's a silly exercise but it gets the point home, at least for today in my head, that I am not the focus. I am not the subject of these sentences, at least not theologically. That God is the focus. It's not my qualities or my qualifications that make me a part of what's going on and what's important here. It's not, it's not me that's special. It is my relationship with God. It's my position in relation to God through Christ that makes me special. My suffering, my suffering does not itself lead to salvation. Christ has already done that. 
God and Christ are the subject here. That's what this is telling us really matters. What really matters, the true subject, the true focus is God's love lived out and revealed in Christ through the gift of the Holy Spirit imparting, gifting it to us. Pouring it into our hearts. We are not the subjects. I am not the subject. I am the receiver of God's work. Amen? So while I may feel like there is a lot of distance between Paul and myself, both in terms of time and in terms of circumstance, while I feel like there's this great gap between he and I and, and him and us, we are brought very close when we understand that what makes us special what makes us part of the same body is the work of Christ, is the work of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. And that, the Holy Spirit, God and Christ, those are the three focal points. And if you, and especially me, can remember that, we're going to be a whole lot better off. Because then we won't start with me. We'll start with God, the Holy Spirit, and Christ. Keeping our focus, keeping our eyes, our ears, our hearts fixed on that. That which is truly, truly the focus and really, really special. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, so often I come to the Scripture looking for what it has for me. What can you give me today? Gimme, gimme, gimme. I need, I need, I need. Lord, remind me this day and each day to come to the Scripture not looking for what I might receive, but looking for what this has to tell me about who I am in light of who you are and what you've done, God. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit on us this day. Pour into us the love of God and the certainty that we are, we are saved through faith in Christ. Lord, bring us constantly back to the realization that it is through our relation to you that we are made more and more perfect by you, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the cleansing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, be with those this day who struggle, those who suffer and those who mourn, be with those of our sisters and brothers in the faith who live in places where it doesn't feel so far to talk about faith and suffering in the same breath. Lord, be with your church. Be with us. Make us better witnesses to the world. And God, we pray and give you thanks for the gift of those who have shared the faith with us for those who have finished their race and have gone on to live in Christ. We thank you especially for the gift of Pat Ray, who now rests in you. God, we pray all this in the name of Christ our Lord, the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.